What up, world? This is your boy, Mark Wall, the War Super Fat Show, Super Fat Network. Today we got with us on the, right after they released their, their outstanding album, Don't Be Stupid, The Gotti Mob, Corrupt, and C-Mob. How you doing today, gentlemen? Good, good. I cannot complain, buddy. Ted so won't do no good, right? No, nah, ain't nobody gonna listen. Okay, I heard that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the first question is, what made y'all decide to go ahead and be a group? Oh, man. Uh, that credit goes to M80 and C-Mob. They came up with the whole game because I already done mm -hmm. some records with C-Mob uh, in the past. So then we, you know, they was just like, you know what, let's just put together an EP. But it just was sounding so, so clean, so crisp that we just kept on going and turned it to an album. And then we came up with the Gotti Mob. Or is, is it going to be a one-on-one -on -one or y'all going to continue releasing music? Hell yeah, we're going to continue to go. I mean, why yeah. stop the flow? <laughs> I heard that. See, Mob, yeah, do you remember the about the music? All about the music. Yes, sir. Hey, hey see, Mob, what, do you remember what the first song you heard Corrupt on was? Oh, shit. Uh, probably, uh, when the corrupt gave a fuck about a bit, I'd always <laughs> be broke. <laughs> yeah, that ain't no fun. Yeah. For real. <laughs> that, that, that's a strong one. Corrupt, you remember the first time you heard CMOP? Oh man, when, when I did the record with him, when M80 sent me the record, because M80 brought C Mob to my table, so I heard it. And I was, you know, I was like, damn, he's shit feeling, right? So I'm just like, damn, okay, I like this, I like this. Then I found out later that, you know, he was fucking with my homeboy Tech Nine too. So I was like, wow, you know, everything's connected. So it's like, yeah, that's the first time I heard C Mob was when we uh M80 brought him to my table. We did our first record. He sent it in to me and I'm like, who's this? <laughs> yeah, C Mob do stand out on a song. That's what that's hella for sure. Hell yeah. I'm like, what the shit is this? He was like, okay. I said, okay, okay. Then we did a couple more. He sent me a couple more to do with him. And then we came up with uh doing a project. That's for those who ain't Oh, my bad. For those who ain't familiar, including myself, who's M80? M80 is uh, one of our business partners who we do business with, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, uh, he's that he's that game, man. M80 stay in the game. He stay connecting the dots. I call him the dot connector. Okay, I can I can dig that. The, um, so, so what, y'all been having a lot of issues with stupid people? Hell yeah. All the time. I'm 50 years old. I'm still. I still got it. Got stupid motherfuckers coming around. Stupid, and dumb. They so. They so smart. They stupid. She you ever met a, a nigga that's so smart? He dumb. Yes, sir. Too smart yeah. for them. Motherfucking good. Well, you know, you get that. You get. You meet these people in business. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in regular life, day to day life. You know what I'm saying? They just everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, and, and also it ain't about just stupid people. We're really trying to educate people. I was gonna you know, up. don't be don't be stupid, man. Like you're walking into a club with all this jewelry on. Then you wonder why you get jacked. Come on. man. Come on, man. You know, you meet this girl. She's a hoe. You know, you're spending the night at her house pocket full of money flossing all the time around her got all this jewelry now you invite her to your house and she leaves the door open and you wonder why niggas come in and hit your spot you know i was gonna ask you that because like as much as you might not like the stupid people i did feel like y'all was trying to educate them like like particularly on that song about social media but yeah. like that, that that was that was hella good game right there yeah see mom came up with that game like let's touch on this subject right here because you know with the album I just follow C Mob's lead, you know. It's like, cause I like new and fresh shit. You know, I can always hit them with the gangster shit, but I've been there and done that. You know, I'm into new shit. So I'm like, you know, C Mob, I'm gonna follow your lead uh with the music. I'm gonna follow your lead, him and them 80s lead with the subject matters. I follow him, I follow the C Mob's lead. 
and uh, you know, fresh new subject matters, concentration. Then when he started talking about the bitches and hoes, I was like, well, you know, that's my specialty, baby. <laughs> that's when the fun began. Yo, I, I listen to the John on Spotify. I don't know how I look up the producer credits. Who, who produced the MC8 song? That, that that beat is hard as fuck. Wow. That was my guy, uh, Mossberg from Atlanta. He's done a lot of production for me over the years. He produced a lot of um, a lot of my album, The Devil and Dickies. He produced a lot of Masterpiece of Mine and uh, Lazarus Pit, too. I've been fucking with him for years. Okay, well, shit, he put his foot up in that motherfucker. How the, um... Medicine's cracking. Yeah, no doubt. How did X rated come to be on, on the on the project? I, maybe you made a song with him before Corrupt because you done put out like 500 albums, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I enjoy seeing him on the on it and I definitely like the song. You know, that's the thing too. You know, C Mob brought that game to the table, but that's the first time I ever did a record with X rated. I've always wanted to do a record with X rated. We fucks with X rated and Brother Lynch hung and all of them. But I never had. I, I did record. I did a record with Brother Lynch Hung before, but I never had the the honor of uh, rocking with X Rated. And then C Mob brought him to the table. I said, "Oh, look at this shit. Good job." But yeah, C Mob did that game. Yeah, I, I'm from the D.C. area, and, and and I had a partner that was from Seattle, Washington, and uh, man, he, he loved motherfucking X Rated. He had like like 25 of them shits. <laughs> right, as he should. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Shit, I got like 25 of your shits, but I know, I, especially including the Dog Pound Jones, I, 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 know, I know I ain't got nowhere near it. And, and I had, I actually had the Devil and Dickies on a CD. Wow. As you should. Yeah, yeah. I, I, shit, I, I, I ordered me a Gotti Mob vinyl. It's going to go up behind me. I mean, you are the man. I mean, coming from <laughs> you, that, that those are strong motherfucking words, brother. Hey, look, see, Rob. What it's up? cold. It's cold as fuck. Fucking Indiana right now, ain't it? Yeah, fortunately, I'm in Seattle right now. So, it is. See, oh my God. Yeah, I got a show tonight here in Seattle. It looked like you smoking weed. Smoke just coming out. <laughs> you ain't got no blood, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's colder than this back home in Indiana. So, yeah, it is? Kind of. Yeah, it's cold as fuck. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. I just saw that smoke. This ain't nothing. I just saw that smoke. I was like, damn, this crap. So I, I got a couple uh individual questions, if that's cool. Indeed. Go for it. All right. So see my when I was looking looking up, you know, I was I, I try to look up interviews and do do my homework and shit. They 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 constantly refer to you as horrorcore. Do you embrace that term? I do not. I do not at all. Um <laughs> I, see, I didn't think it was applicable. <laughs> I hate, I call horror chorus, like, you know, I have some, you know, dark content. I have some videos, you know, with some dark imagery in it. And I think as soon as people see that, they, they immediately jump to horror core. If, uh, if you're, if anyone is familiar with my catalog and my content, my subject matter, I am definitely not horror core. I don't, I don't like to be put in that box. No, yeah. Nothing against horror artist but i just you know i don't like to be put in a box i like to stay versatile with my with my delivery and my subject matter you you definitely versatile the delivery when, when you first started rapping how, how did you know that you could rap fast or what led you to experiment with it because you know a lot of people ain't that good at it definitely not like you um well see when i was a kid like i used to write a lot of poetry you know what i'm saying and um that was kind of a way i uh would let out my emotions and shit. And uh, one day one of my homeboys was like, hey, I bet you can't rap that to a beat. And I was like, shit, okay, let's, you know, let's give that a try. So I did, and it sounded good. And then he was like, I bet you can't rap that shit fast like bone. Yes. <laughs> so, so yeah, I did, and, and that shit sounded good. Um, and and I just been at it ever since, you know, when, when I first started, I was nowhere near, um, you know, the level I'm at now, but, you know, it's shit. That was over 25 years ago that I started, you know, working at it. So I can dig it. Hey, hey both of y'all can weigh in on this one. I, I be saying this all the time. I'm curious as to y'all opinion. You know, they be arguing about the South, Midwest, all that type stuff. Like, like just on the quality of the music. But I, I feel like the West 
has like dominated, like like absolutely dominated nonstop classic albums, like like Ab Soul, Vince Staple, Tyler the Creator, YG, Nipsey Hussle, Mad DPG, Corrupt Releases, Mad Snoop albums, and, and, and I don't think it gets the credit. Like like it's it's like people ain't, I, I don't know, get, get, giving y'all y'all rings. I mean, you know, it's all good. You know, it's all in the name of hip hop. We're all branches of hip hop, you know, and, uh, you know, we get our flowers uh, from the ones who do support us. So we appreciate them. You know, the Midwest stretches so long, you know what I'm saying? So much in the Midwest, they've contributed so much to hip hop. The West Coast stretches so long and we've contributed so much to hip hop. You know, we really don't trip off of those who don't give us the props. We more concentrate on those that do give us our flowers. So yeah, we yeah. don't really trip. Yeah. You always gotta, gotta give more energy to the loves and to the hate. Yeah, yeah. True indeed, shit, corrupt props to you for shouting out Just Ice. Hell yeah, Just Ice is the man. Oh, yeah, Shit, brother, he, one the, the first, the, he one of the first original gangster rappers, believe it or not. There's Schooly D. He, yes, sir. Ice T told me Schooly D was the first gangster rapper he ever heard. <clears throat> he made six in the morning. Uh, basically giving props to Schooly D for PSK. And that's where that's how he made a six in the morning. So, and then you had just Ice and Cool G rap. They was all over. G shit, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I had to do it. Well, what era do King T fit in? Ice. <laughs> it's just uh, ice. That, that was a hot line. What 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 era do King T fit in there? Is he around the same time as Just Ice or a little bit after? Well, you know, King T's original West Coast, you know, that's what they don't know about King T. He's one of the first King T DJ Pooh, Mix Master Spade, you know what I'm saying? Mixed Tiny Spade. T. Yep. So you know, uh, yeah, he fits right in there in that loop. But I was in Philly, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't get a dose of like King T at the time. I was in Philly. And uh, what was you listening you know, to? I was listening to uh, an artist named Mike Stro, Sugar Hill Gang, Curtis Blow. Um, that's what I started off with, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and those like Treacherous Three, Kumo D, Sunshine, you know what I'm saying, Special K. Um, you know, I was listening to all of that back then because that's what my cousin was playing. Because my mama wouldn't let me play none of that shit. I had to go to my cousin's house in Germantown to hear some hip hop. And he was a rapper, he's the one that inspired me. So so I didn't get a chance to get the originals of uh, King T and all that. That original Uncle Jam's Army and stuff. So, you know, I was into, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, Schooly D and Just Ice and Rock Him, Cool G Rap and all that. Then when I got to the West, I got educated on how original West Coast rap was. They've been doing it. That's when I ran across DJ Pooh, Mixmaster Spade, and all of them. Yeah. Did you ever almost sign with Rockefeller? No. Cause it seemed like you was on a lot of jumps for for like like a like a two or three year period, and that was like the little little rumor. They'd be like Rockefeller about to get Dog Pound, Big L. Shit, you know we we fucks with uh, Jigga and them, man. You know what I mean? So, you know we love the opportunity. We we really was shocked Jay fucked with us like that. You know, cause everybody wanted to fuck with Snoop, so Jay did records with. Jay didn't just do records with Snoopy. You know, he did records with Snoopy, and then he come and get me and Daz. That's why we love Jigga, you know what I'm saying? And, and then you got DJ Clue. He fucked with us, you know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, we, you know, they they would come in. They would allow us to be a part. Yeah, we would be a part. So as many times as you see us uh, fucking with them, you know what I'm saying? That was that was Damien and uh, Jay and DJ Clues reaching out to us and giving us that golden opportunity. Hey, see my, some of my favorite, two of my favorite songs of yours is the Jones you did with Lord Infamous. I mean, you did more, but uh, how'd you link with Lord Infamous? Oh, I, I link with Lord Infamous. 
Yes, sir. Oh. Um, I think, to be honest, I did, a, I did a track with Coopster back in the day. Me, Coopster, and Bizarre from D12. And uh, I don't know, we linked through Two Tone. Two Tone, my guy, Two Tone from Memphis. Yeah, Two Tone and uh, Lord Infamous were uh, doing albums together back then. They had this uh, Black Rain Entertainment. Linked through them. And that was how I started doing music with uh with Lord Infamous. I was on a couple of his albums, and uh, yeah, then he ended up, you know, passing away. So RP. yeah, rest in peace. But yeah, Man, I got I, the honor to work with him a little bit. I, I interviewed DJ Paul, and he was with him like the week before he died. That shit was sad as shit. It's too many people dying young for real. Anything under seventies young would be dying. Yeah, we losing a lot of our great ones, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, when we was young, it was all, you know, all the people that we knew was fine. You know, we would always hear about, it was rare for stars to die. It was rare for people in the game to pass yeah. away, you know what I'm saying? Um, but nowadays, it's happening left and right. It's crazy. So... That's what don't be stupid is about. You know what I'm saying? No it's bullshit. like, man, you gotta you gotta take care of your health. You gotta watch your wealth. You gotta mind the, you gotta watch the people that you around, the company that you keep. You gotta watch these bitches and hoes and these sucker ass niggas. You know what I'm saying? You know, and you got to be careful, man. You got to be more careful. So, you know, just don't be stupid, stupid. This. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, C Mob, I'm definitely fucking with the Lazarus pit too. Um, I, I just wanted to make sure I get I got some gave that some shine and I have an excuse to post on Dirty Glove Bastard with this podcast. But I'm I'm curious, like like dog, bring a bootleg from the Dayton family with you. That that, that was a strong move. Yeah, um, I worked with a bootleg a few times back in like 2012 we had we got a few uh few tracks together i think like maybe like two or three yeah three three I, yeah i did two with bootleg and then one with the whole date family but uh uh yeah so lazarus pit was like an album of like remakes and remixes of older tracks oh, yeah, so i made sure i brought because i feel like uh i feel like that uh that bootleg collab got slept on so and i grew up with to the date family too. I love the date family, so yeah, I had to make sure I put that on there. Like, like Krub been saying, as you should. The um, that that, that shit was creative as hell. What made you think of Doctor Seraphim? Um, so it's basically like the Lazarus Pit album is a continuation of the Devil and Dickies album because the Devil and Dickies album was a it was a story from start to finish. Like a lot of rappers will write, you know, tracks that are stories. But the but the Devil and Dickies album was a story from start to finish with every song playing a part in that story. So Lazarus Pit was a follow up to it. And um, so like Dr. Sarah Fim, like if you put her name together, Sarah Fim is one of like the highest orders of angels. angels yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I got I got a little creative with that. You just kind of you got to you know, if if you if you're watching this and you haven't heard the albums, just give the albums a listen and you'll you'll have a better understanding. Yeah, most definitely. Hey, Krupp, what was it like working with Steven Seagal? Hey, hey, before we go, I want to give a shout out to my daughter, Jalissa. It's crack the honor. Okay, good job, Jalissa. That's what's up. Boom. Oh, wow. What an accomplishment. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> you know, the crazy thing is music is everywhere. Um, Uncle Steve, he took me in like a nephew. <clears throat> he called me after a week on set, we filmed in Berlin. Uh, me, Steve, Ja Rule, Morris, Nia, Peoples. And, um, you know, he just, we just connected from the door. He would take me out with him and his buddies and go to like the bars and go kick it. He 
call me up in my room. Hey, what are you doing? Come on, let's go. Then he invited me to his room. And he would get on the acoustic guitar. And he played reggae records on his <laughs> acoustic guitar. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> he was doing Bob Marley's redemption song and all this type of Bob Marley shit on the guitar. I was just watching my Wow, you would never know it. And he was good. His voice was right. I mean, he was good. And I was like, damn, Uncle, you need to make some records. He's like, yeah, you know, we do this for fun. You know, <laughs> you know it's crazy. All the niggas that's big always have a light voice. You know, they be big as fuck. And they be oh, like, well, you know, I just, I don't really like, you know. <laughs> but yeah, man, it, it was fun, man. He really be fucking people up, though. You know, all that stunts, he does his own stunts and shit. And he really be, they really, he really hit people. Yeah. I was like, I mean, he was fucking people up, man. He was really hitting niggas, man. Ba -bing! And he'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's do it. Again. I was like, damn. Oh, God. Hey, he made them earn their pay, buddy. And no, it was fun, though. It was fun. But, you know, he took me under his wing, and he's a very good, good friend of mine. He's an OG to me, you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was great. <laughs> That's what's up. And then, you know, last thing before the socials and, you know, GottyMob.com and all that good stuff is, uh, are, are y'all going to tour and, what, and what's the next moves? Uh, we're going to keep dropping these videos. I think we're about, uh, what, we five in? Seems five in. Like. Just dropped the fifth last week. Yep. Uh, Want to be a help. So we're going to drop two more of those. And then I think uh, we're going to plan for me and C-Mob to hit the road. And uh, give the people live and direct, got him up. So yeah, we plan on hitting that road. Uh, matter of fact, when I get back to Cancun next week, uh, I'm gonna have a conversation with the team about just that. You know, what's up with setting up the road trip so we can get out here and, and keep pushing. Um, I think we're gonna do that after I shoot this, uh, my next video from the album, because. Uh, the video we just released is C Mob solo uh, song on the album. So we're doing mine next. After that, I'm like along them lines. While that's out, that's when we're probably going to be uh, trying to hit that road and then uh, get out there and give the people that, that good magic. You know what I'm saying? From the, mid, from the Midwest to the West Coast. Hello. No, Florida. Well, I think we're going to start, be honest with you, I want to start in, in C-Mob's hometown. I want to start in Indiana and work our way to the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully we can hit Florida, you know what I mean? I mean, ain't no place that we won't go. Hello. Hey, like book it. As we should. And then, and then the absolutely last thing, what, what can they find on GottyMob.com? All the All merchandise, right. you know what I'm saying? Tell them about the C-Mob. Yeah, they can find uh, the CD, the hard copies of the CDs, autographed CDs, uh, limited edition cassettes. Right now we're doing pre-orders for the vinyls. Those should ship uh, in July. We got hoodies. We got hats. We got beanies. Basically, all your uh, all your collecting needs are on GottyMob.com. I will Indeed. jump Gentlemen, th thank you so much for the years of great music, and thank you for your time. Thanks for having us, good. Thank you for having us, man. I'm I'm out here in Seattle. I got a show tonight. I'm trying to eat dinner, and it was uh, fucking <laughs> loud as fuck. It's loud as fuck in this pizzeria. So I'm eating outside in the cold to do this uh this this interview. So, but it, hey, it's worth it, man. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Hey, hey, see, see, my with the dude. See, my. Lima <laughs> hit him with the with, with the do the right thing. He says it's loud as fuck in his pizzeria. <laughs> pizzeria. <laughs> Not the pizzeria. <laughs> pizzeria. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, don't know, I ain't mad at that. Well, shit. Thank you, fellas, and, and y'all have a good night. You too, good buddy. Thank you. Yes, sir. Peace. Welcome to the Super Facts Show on the Super Facts Network. I just appreciate you listening. So I'm not going to ask you to follow me on Instagram at Mark Waldo War. I'm not going to ask you to rate and review the show. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe to it. Thank you for your time.